Hello everybody. Today's church service is brought to you by my barn. I had planned to tape this outside near some water and the water we got but it's coming down straight from the clouds. So I'm inside my barn and you can probably hear it hitting the metal roof. And I think it's appropriate because on this day of Pentecost that we celebrate on Sunday, water figures into it um, somewhat prominently as well as fire, as well as wind, as well as a group of disciples going crazy, speaking in many tongues. So we'll get into all that, but let's begin with a word of prayer. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, I guess it was appropriate that Mr. Rooster over there decided to sing out during our prayer just now. Uh, you might remember it was the Apostle Peter, right, who denied Jesus three times and the cock crowed. Well, in our first reading from, I'm going to be doing two readings today. The first one is the longer one from the book of Acts. We're going to see Peter be the one who stands up in front of the crowds and pre preaches a sermon that just rocks them to the core. Reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we are hearing them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? <laughs> but others sneered and said, Ah, they're just filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy." And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then 
everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, a very short reading from the uh, Gospel of John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. All right, two very different passages, two different places, uh, two different festivals. That's what's kind of interesting about this. Our common lectionary gives us a lot of readings that we can choose from today, and I chose these two, the one being the more familiar Pentecost uh, version of the Spirit descending upon the disciples in the book of Acts. Um, Pentecost being a springtime early harvest festival. And the people would be gathering from all over all over the Roman Empire basically coming together in Jerusalem to worship. The other one talks about Jesus standing up on the last day of the festival. The great day. What festival? What great day? Ah, see, this was a different festival. It was one that happened in the fall during harvest time. The festival of tabernacles. The festival of booths. Uh, it was one that lasted for seven days. And it was an important festival. One of the more important festivals. And trust me, the Jewish people of Jesus' day knew how to celebrate. They were having festivals all the time. But there were three very important ones, and this was one of them. And during this festival, the priests would go down to the Pool of Siloam and pull out enough water to last for seven days. Now, the people themselves had to go draw water and take it back to their booths. That's why it was called the Festival of, of Booths. They would construct little handmade... Oh, come on. You probably did it as a kid. You went out in the backyard, back in the woods, and you made yourself a little cabin or a little teepee. Well, that's what the people would do. And it was to symbolize how the people of Israel moved out of slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land. And along the way, they would construct construct little houses for them to live in, right? Just little things that they slapped up real quick, a little bit of protection. Festival of Booths. Um, now, later on, they would also gather together uh, pussy willows and palms and, and make like a little thing that they could shake in the air. And it was during the Festival of Booths that each day the priests would come up and circle around the altar with this water that came from the Pool of Siloam. And the people would shout their hosannas. Yep, their hosannas. Because they were celebrating God saving the people. So water was a very important part of this festival. It was a harvest festival, but also you're talking about water being that one thing that's so important to life. Now it's on the very last day of the festival. Probably when the priest is circling around the altar with this water. And I have to let you know, they also circled around with a bowl of wine as well. And as he's circling around, Jesus says these words that we have from John. That he's the one who is can provide them living water. Living water. Hmm. Now that is important because living water is in opposition to stale water. Stale water. 
So now we can understand what's going on, why out of nowhere Jesus pronounces that he's the source of living water. Or is it just that? Or Because it says, out of his belly shall flow living water. He, he's quoting a scripture passage that uh, scholars still haven't found, believe it or not. We don't know what he's quoting from. He comes close to a few passages out of Isaiah. But, but otherwise, we, we don't know what scripture. Perhaps there were other scriptures that the Jewish people read from that we just don't know about and not aren't a part of the uh, canonical Hebrew scriptures today. But be that as it may, flowing from Jesus' belly, meaning this living water, the Spirit of God flowing out from God to the people? Or is it a better translation that says that those waters flow from the believer's belly, yours and mine? Isn't that interesting? Think about that. We're not really sure how to translate this verse. And if you were to go and pick up different translations of the Bible, you're going to see it both ways. Because we just don't know. I think it's awesome that we don't know. Because I think it is both ways. That Spirit of God flows from God Himself, from Jesus, out into our lives, the living water. And then we, in turn, become the source of living water for others. Wow. Now, let's join that up with our reading from Acts, which is also during a festival time, a different one, the early harvest festival, Pentecost. And now we see that Spirit of God enter into a group of, of, of scared disciples huddled in the upper room. Maybe something like this barn I'm in right now, kind of dank and, and dreary, and uh, we don't know what's happening next. And suddenly there's a the sound of a tornado, a rushing wind, a storm blows up, and the wind blows through, and there's fire, fire on their heads. That would kind of hurt, I think, but it didn't. But they were filled with the Spirit of God, and this group of scared disciples would go out and turn the world upside down. Look at what it did to Peter, right there on the spot. Peter is the one who gives his grand and glorious sermon. And thousands are made wet that day. Thousands are baptized into the name of Jesus. This is a big, exciting day in the life of the church. It's a day in which we celebrate God's presence with us through his gift of himself the Holy Spirit, living and dwelling in us, working in wild and mysterious ways, you and I, going out into the world, boldly proclaiming in languages that, that circumvent the world, Jesus is alive, Jesus is for real, Jesus is the one who brings light, life, and hope to our dark and dreary world. There's so much more we can say about these passages, but the beauty of it all is that on this day of Pentecost, as we now enter into a new season of the church year, the Sundays after Pentecost, we are going to talk about how God's Spirit informs us, enlivens us, and brings us together as His people. Let's join together now in a time of prayer. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Come Holy Spirit, enliven the church to speak your words of forgiveness and salvation in every language and tongue. Pour out your spirit on witnesses of every age, gender, and nationality. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit, send cooling breezes where people and creatures are suffering oppressive heat. 
save the land from drought and wildfires. Bless the work of those who make it possible to harness the power of the sun and the wind. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit, dispel human arrogance and establish leaders who are humble of heart. Speak peace into all the world, especially into our troubled lands and cities here in this country. Overcome prejudice and fear. Move us to support international aid organizations and those who provide aid to immigrants, refugees, and all those in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit. You hear us when we cry to you. Bring clarity and hope to those living with dementia, anxiety, depression, or addiction. Accompany those who feel weak and worn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal your love through families of all shapes and sizes. Bring joy to co-parents, single parents, and those without children. Bless extended families, foster families, adoptive families, and families of friends. Bring closure and healing to broken relationships. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit. You make us children of God and joint heirs with Christ. We praise you for all your saints who know the fullness of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come now to us with your saving help for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little mini church service today. A little bit different. Not quite what I was hoping to do. Although, with that image of water, spirit, even talking a little bit about baptism, thousands of people baptized on that day of Pentecost with those raindrops hitting the roof. All a good image of how God comes to us in many and surprising ways. God's blessing. Have a great and wondrous day.